Steve, don't you think that the space program of the United States and the Soviet Union started uh, in the conditions where extraterrestrial technologies came to the Earth? Because if it was the empty space, empty Earth, no, there, there is no such a human thoughts which could move these space programs? This is a very, very good question. It is uh, a very interesting historical truth that in spite of the, quote, Cold War and the clear commitment of both the Soviet Union and the United States to point as many nuclear missiles at each other as they could from as many places as they could, including submarines and the ocean. And almost on about a half a dozen occasions ended up with a nuclear war. These, this has all been coming out over the last 10 years and more and more people know how many times it almost had a nuclear war. And in three of those occasions it was one of your officers or one of your officials that stood up and said no, that stopped it. And, and it kind of faded into history, though they're starting to get recognized now. But in spite of that, we started cooperating on the space program, didn't we? Interesting. Mortal enemies. I think you're right. One of the reasons that we're cooperating in the space program is that we know, yeah, we're not alone. And that there might be benefits in our at least joining forces there. Because let's be clear, when the United States first became certain of this extraterrestrial presence, which could have been in 47, might have been in sooner, because there were, we think, some crashes prior to World War II, but it would have been very contained. Same for the Soviet Union. No doubt that the leaders of the political leaders and the military leaders assume this is a mortal threat. This is an existential threat. They don't know what they want. They don't know the details. So let's let's assume it's a threat. And you know, the truth is, if you know anything about physics, you know that whatever the Soviets and the United States thought it could do to each other, these guys could do much worse. In fact, over the years, they have repeatedly turned off nuclear weapons in nuclear missile sites, not only in the United States, but in Russia. It's a little message that, like, these weapons mean nothing to us. Why do you have them? And so, clearly, a lot of people within both countries said, you know, well, yeah, We've got it in for each other, but well, we've got to deal with this too, so let's get a little cooperation in. All right. It is better, it, it, it is increasing, it's become increasingly better known that John F. Kennedy was a visionary, wanted to increase this cooperation, and had suspicions about the UFO reality. And certain documents have emerged, which are troubling because we know he was assassinated not too long after that. But in any event, yeah. So, so when you look at the 20th century, some of it is like a play up on a stage where the Soviets are playing their part and the United States is playing its part and trillions of dollars are being spent and yet behind that play is another reality that's much more important. And you kind of wonder, why are they spending all this money on this kind of play in the front here, when really we need to get to that? And that's interesting. Uh, but the politics of nations and governance is very complicated. And it all has a huge history behind it. And it's not just easy to change course. So all of this kind of went on at the same time. The real history, the total history, of what took place on this planet between 1947 and today, when it's finally known, is going to blow people's minds. They go, oh my God, it was so much more interesting and difficult and complicated than we thought. And so, it turns out 
that for reasons that are not clear, the United States stopped going to the moon, and Russia gave up going to the moon a year ago, and we stopped going. And then we, we uh, gave up the shuttles, our, our, our space shuttles, and now, ironically, the Russians are the ones that take Americans up into space, which is kind of cute, kind of like that. But it makes you wonder, what's going on here? Well, I can give you a clue, all right? If you know, if you have anti-gravitic propulsion craft, which Russia may have as well, don't know. The, the evidence there is less, less uh, obvious. But you can't tell the world. And you still have to have a space program, because if you don't have a space program, people are going to ask questions. You literally have got to have this whole other uh, dual uh, reality here. So you're building these big, huge chemical rockets, and you're sending them to cost a fortune. And, and you got, meanwhile, over here in the secret space program that they like to call it now, you got guys moving around in anti-gravitation. And of course, you've got astronauts dying in these chemical rockets, which is awkward. You see the dilemma? This is kabuki theater. Everybody's walking around with a mask in front of them. It's, it's, you know, it's given that NASA a nervous breakdown. It's cost a fortune and a vast billions of dollars that have to be spent in order to keep everything so much secret. And so, but still, it's a problem. And so, you, 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 you don't go to the moon anymore because you can go to the moon, just you don't want to use a Saturn V to get there. And, you know, the space shuttles are just, it's ridiculous technology. And at some point, let's just stop that. And the Russians, I think, have kind of gone along with this. Again, I would love to know the details behind the Russian strategy on this and how they have interact, how they have, how they view the United States' as truth embargo and what it means and, 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 and what, what thinking they, they, they have and what they might or might not do and what they fully know because it's not clear. One of the other reasons, and I didn't mention this earlier, that might give a President Putin a pause to be the disclosure president right, and take that legacy for the country would be this, if true. And that is, let's say that the United States got a number of ET vehicles from crash events that were researchable, re-engineerable, and what have you. And let's say that perhaps Russia might have gotten a craft, but they weren't, they were destroyed. There wasn't much they could do with it. Then it could be possible that as of today, the United States is much further along with developing extraterrestrial derived technologies than Russia. And President Putin might be concerned that if he takes that legacy out from under us. If he, if he, if he takes away our prerogative, our self-ascribed prerogative, he may not get access to that technology for a while. Though there will be huge pressure on the U.S. government to share it. I mean, I assure you that will be the case. And so, he's possibly factoring that in. I don't know. Again, these are just speculations.